Yo, everybody, this episode, we are going to be talking about the hash code method. And we touched on this in the previous episode. You don't have to go watch that if you haven't. We're going to go from scratch in this episode. But it is a, a super important method for hash collections, such as the hash map. Essentially, a hash code method is going to take any object and give us an integer from that object. So we're going to go through a simple example with a string, but this should work for any object. So we'll say string s, give it some value, and then what we can do, we'll output this so we can see the value, say s dot hash code. You can get more information about the hash code method for string right here, the algorithm on how this integer is calculated if you're interested. So let's run this and see what output we get you can see we get this number right here. So pretty much the string class over, overrided, overrode, I don't know how to say that, the, the uh, hash code method, it actually came from the object class. So every class inside of Java ultimately inherits from object, even if that's not explicitly stated. So if we hold command or control on Windows and hit string, it doesn't say extends object. However, it is implicitly extending the object class. So in other words, here, let me show you what I mean here. If we switch this to an object and we open this up, there is a method inside of this class called hash code. So we can find this and all we have to do is search hash code and the left parentheses, press enter and boom, it's right here. And every other class inherits from this object class. So every single one's going to get the hash code. The default hash code is just going to derive this integer from the memory address of the object. But certain classes override it and give some custom way of figuring out this hash code. And that's exactly what string did because inside of the string class, the hash code method does something different than the default object version of the hash code. So why am I rambling and giving you all this junk? The, the point is, if we create our custom classes, there is a high chance we'll need to override the hash code method to do something special. Specifically, if we are overriding the equals method, we also have to override the hash code method. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try to understand all the aspects of the hash code method. And we're going to first look at this from the standard object hash code. So when we look at this, hover over it and see the general contract of hash code, these are the things that need to be met with this method in order for it to be correct and a valid hash code. All right. So the first thing, whenever it is invoked on the same object more than once during an execution of a Java application, the hash code method must consistently return the same integer. So what does that mean? What that means is if I run this s.hashcode method more than once, you can see we get the same exact output twice. Now, it is the case that each time we run this application, we get the same number. However, that is not part of the contract. And in fact, in here it states, the integer need not remain consistent from one execution of an application to another of the same application. It just so happens that we're getting the same value each execution, but that is not a requirement. The main thing is that if we call the hash code twice in the same execution, we get that same value two times. So that is the first component of the hash code contract. The second thing, if two objects are equal according to the equals method, then calling the hash code method on each of the two objects must produce the same integer result. So in other words, if we have another string in here, I guess we'll go with, we'll switch this to a string for a moment. And let's give these guys the same value. And what I wanna do is I wanna say s.equals and pass in t. So we're gonna see if s is equal to t based on the equals method. Press run and you can see it's true. So if this returns true, then running the hash code on both of these s and t, they both need to be the same exact value. So running this, you can see they are in fact 
the same exact value. All right, let's go back to what we had. We'll just go with one string here. And I wanna see that description, so I'm gonna switch this back to an object and hover over hash code. And let's see what that third bullet point in here. It is not required that if two objects are unequal according to the equals method, then calling the hash code method on each of the two objects must produce distinct integers. So what that is saying is if we have two objects that are not equal, so let's say we had another one here, these two objects do not have to have different hash codes. It can be the case that by coincidence, the hash codes are exactly the same. Let's see what they are. So we'll have s.hashcode and t.hashcode. Run this, and you can see that they are in fact different, and that's just, I guess you could say, coincidence, but it's not really a coincidence because the majority of the time, pretty much all the time, objects are going to have different hash codes. So to summarize that last bullet point one more time, if two objects are equal based on the equals method, they have to have the same hash code. But if the objects are different, then they do not have to have different hash codes. They can have the same hash codes by coincidence. However, it is recommended to have a, a large variety of hash codes because that's going to make your hash collections much faster. That's because the hash collections use these numbers to basically calculate what index to put a particular object at for a hash map as an example. So in an extreme case where every single object had the exact same hash code, the exact index would always be calculated and that would put every single item in the same index, which would do, we'd have to deal with lots of conflicts with that and internally the storage would not be optimized in that situation. That's why a large variety of hash codes is ideal and that's honestly what you're going to get the majority of the time. So far, we've just talked about hash code in the context of the object class as well as the string class. And in the next episode, we're going to show you how to do this with custom classes. But for now, I just want to show you why you might need to override the hash code method using strings as an example. So let's keep this really simple. We're gonna work with two strings and they obviously have two separate values so they're not the same thing. And we'll call this first one hello and we'll call the second one by. That's just the name of the variable there. And the way these are compared, you would say hello dot equals and we would pass in by. If the string class did not override the hash code method, the, the way the hash code method would get the hash code is using the memory address of the string. But we know that this equals method for the, the string class actually compares things using the characters rather than the memory address. So in order for equals and hash code to be on the same page, giving similar results, if equals is equals, then the hash code needs to be the same thing as well it would need to work in a similar way. Rather than using the memory address, it uses the actual content of the string. So maybe I'm just repeating the same thing I already said, <laughs> but when this translates to creating our own classes, if let's say we have a class for a person and this person has a first name and a last name and maybe like a social security number, and we wanted to compare if two objects are the same person, we would compare by first name, last name, and social security number. Make sure they are the same person. By default though, the equals is going to just use their memory address, not what we want. So we override the equals method to make sure that the objects are equal based on the content of their fields. And when we do this, we need to override the hash code method because it's by default going to use the memory address and that's not what we want to use. So instead we need to make sure we're using the fields so that when the fields are the same, the hash code is the same. And we're going to be showing you guys how to do that in the next video. So stay tuned for that. I'm excited. This stuff can be a little complicated, but I think, I think we're getting through it. So let's stick with it and I will see you then.